All right, let's get a rolling. Let's figure this out. And we are good to go. What? Ladies and what, what, what? welcome back to a podcast that the name has changed 17 times, but we're landing. But on. we have a new name. But we got a new name. Which is Just the Taste. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to Just a Taste podcast. It is me, let's Jeffrey. Go. And my name is Dawson Copenhaver. And we're about to give you just a taste. All right, you ready to you ready to start this thing Let's off? Let's kick it off, buddy. Let's kick it All off right. right. We're gonna we're gonna hope we don't get sued for copyright. And I got three songs. Yep. And what we're gonna do today is I'm just gonna play a little intro mm-hmm. and you're gonna tell me the name of the song Release and also the name. artist. Well, uh, okay. What what uh what genres are we ripping? So we're ripping like Oldies, seventies. I think they're all seventies songs. That's tough. Okay. I'm, okay, you ready? I'm up for the challenge. I think you should know. You should know all these songs. Okay. The third one is probably the most challenging. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Do you know it yet? Yeah, Jim Croce. Uh, I want to say "Time in a Bottle." No. No, no, no. I got nothing. I got a name. Yeah. Yep. Sheesh. That was very impressive. All right, this one's also money. pretty easy. Easy money. Uh, Blue Jean Baby, LA Lady. Ooh, Tiny You're... Dancer, Elton John. Okay. Money. All right, this is the last one. Oh, what? Oh, guys, party foul. Hold up. The cops are here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's Eagles. Take it easy. Sheesh! Money. Three for three. Born in the wrong generation, baby. <laughs> wow, that was way better than I ever could have dreamed of doing. You and that, that? <laughs> you mean that is just a taste oh, of Jeffrey's just music just knowledge, taste, baby. Um, well, let's if go. If you guys have any songs that you want played, we probably can't play them. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but right, send them in. To but you. maybe if we only play like a little bit of the intro. And no words. Yeah, I wonder if there is a thing where it's like if you play under a certain amount. Let's look that up. Right, because how would they know if we're playing that or like a cover or... Yeah. They would never know. They know. Also, know no one really cares because, yeah, well, we probably will have like five listeners in our prime. Yeah, but in our... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I no idea where I was going right um, So we got another episode ripping. Anything to report? Anything to tell people? No, like I was telling Jeff, we today we had uh, slugs in our corn. Yeah. That was right. pretty crazy, man. How many slugs do you think there were? Oh, dude. So one guy, we, talk, we talked to like uh, one of our guy who we buy uh, like fertilizer and mm-hmm. stuff from. He said he <laughs> pulled a handful of fodder out of this one dude's field. Not our field. Just one handful, and he counted like fifteen slugs. Ew. And so, yeah, that corn was getting eaten alive, literally. Do you think that you could make like a lotion out of slugs, like goo? Dude, what is that's a goo? great question. Also, do you I remember wonder what slug goo is like? Is slug goo used for anything in like mass production? Yeah, How let's look that up. get that at Google. Also, do you remember murdering slugs as a child? Yeah, with salt. Yeah, Dude, this is terrible. Great. But yeah, if you guys haven't done it, go pour salt in a slug and give it like 15 minutes and it'll change color and die. They Crazy. change colors? I think so. No. Yeah, a little bit. Because they're more of like a red, darker, and they they'll change, change to like a whitish. You dump salt on them. Yeah. It's just the salt that's white. <laughs> just, what? Just um... What am I looking for? Is slug goo? What am I yeah. looking for that? Just look up our slug byproducts used for oh, anything. Yeah. Is slug. Yeah, Dude, you guys okay, can. So this, is, this is new. I'm just thinking about this because I was hitting these ivory keys over here. Yeah. I'm getting a little better at typing now that I'm in the office, which is fun. Um, still not good or anything like, like that. You think you can probably type two words a minute yet? Mm. No. <laughs> okay, how many words do you have typed in right now? That was been about thirty <laughs> seconds. Bipod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that's, that's so funny. I don't know if I could type 25 words a minute. No, that's crazy. You don't think you can? That's crazy people talk. Because like slugging in skincare? I don't I don't even want to really click on that to be honest. Whoa. Is slug and snail slime Oh. Oh, we're on Reddit. This might be da- <laughs> this might be dangerous. Um, let's look her up here, boys. All right, I was looking it up and I got slag instead of slug, and it gave me a bunch of welding stuff. So. Oh yeah, dude. Let's start welding. And uh, just getting yeah. that good old sea bead, baby. Um, you find um, anything? No, I can't read and talk. You know, slug. Trump. Well, so far. So far, no. It doesn't look like... What is Slug in Django Unchained? Interesting. Hmm. It just oh, literally... Medical use. Here we go. Okay. Oh, this website's way too big. It's called Worldwide Wounds. <laughs> it's showing me how to dispose of sludge. Dude, the internet's wild, man. Um... Okay, apparently it can treat skin disorders such as warts. I don't know if I buy that. This paper provides an introduction to the properties of slug slime and considers its potential value in modern wound management. It Hmm. also reports the results of small studies in which the material was successfully used to treat long-lasting warts. There you have it. Put a slug on a wart. And now you have a slug wart. (laughs) (laughs) Slug warts. Well, you got rid of the wart, but now you have a slug living on your skin. Um, That is, that's kind of cool. That's a cool little. That one ain't going anywhere, so. Right. It's a little life hack, guys. You got a wart, find a slug. slug. Yep. And then I guess just let it sit there for a couple days. Yeah, slather on you probably. Yeah. Oh, my. So that's new. Um. In my life, I just got this new computer, if you didn't notice. I did notice no, it's you black. Did, you didn't say a thing. No, but I was about say. to because <laughs> your other one didn't have a black keyboard, right? Literally, so my other laptop fritzed out. I think okay. after doing a little bit of troubleshooting, the there's a wire that goes up to your screen, which is like projects All right. the yeah. display and everything. What I think happened is that wire got rubbed raw and then like, I would open it up, and it, if I would go over halfway open, it would just go black. Oh. So it took it to freaking Best Buy. I'd, right. Not a fan. Not a fan of Best Buy. I went in there, and I was like, hey, this is what's going on. Can you fix it? Right. Apple does not let them work on any computers that are over five years old. What? They, they're like, sorry, we can't service it. So then I had to buy a completely new laptop, even though what? Th- this one like worked. It's just... I needed a new display module. Right. Anywho, I get this thing. Drop way too much money on it because Apple products are insane. Right. Um, ooh, I have a fun little Apple branding note. Don't let me forget. Yeah. Um, what was this? The Apple. Yeah. <laughs> so did you? Yeah. Okay. So then I get this computer, transfer all my data over. Yeah. And then it's like something got corrupted in the transfer. Uh, and that's what I was literally doing when you came over. I was trying to sort that out because I couldn't access any of my stuff. So I was like, freaking brand new thing. And I was I was grumpy. That's so dumb. Yeah. But uh, anywho, this was interesting. I'm now that I am head of marketing and sales. Uh, Ooh. I'm like looking up kind of some marketing videos and like branding and stuff just to gain more knowledge so I can become more valuable so I can make that money. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I looked up a branding video on like Apple and it was sweet because they brought a like neuroscientist in and they got a group of people that were Apple and Android users and put them in an MRI machine and monitored their brain waves yeah. When they would tell the Apple customers good things about Apple, they would see like a spike in their brain pattern. And then when they would tell them bad things about Android, they would also see like a spike in their brain pattern. Like wow. both happy yeah. spikes. In the Android users, when they told them good things about Android, they yeah. didn't see any spike. But when they told them bad things about Apple, they saw like a spike in their brain pattern yeah. or whatever. 
and what the neuroscientist was saying is like and obviously like that was just a pool of people it's not every android user right but they're like for the majority android users don't even like android like when they were saying like happy things about android no spike gotcha. they just hate apple and that's, that's so why funny and, but they so he's like they were telling us like oh yeah we felt good but he's like no because like the actual brain right. science did like they were lying and they didn't even know it which is crazy then they tied that into like branding and like all of apple's branding and marketing and you feel like part of something bigger and right like, the only reason you buy android isn't because you like android it's just because you hate apple which is kind of insane that is crazy i was pretty pumped about it it was a really neat uh video but so yeah that was my little deep dive into apple yeah my mess of a situation that's kind of fun so what'd you do with your old laptop then still just, just sitting out there but i think what i can do now which I don't know why, because I already have a computer upstairs. The computer itself is still perfectly fine. Uh huh. So I could just plug it into a external monitor. Yeah. And it would be totally fine. Gotcha. Which is kind of dumb, but like yeah. I need it to be portable for work and everything, so I needed to get a new one. Right. But... Yeah, that makes sense. And like with, so then I was looking, and like now that I'm kind of in a more marketing position mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> um making million dollar deals oh, easy uh obviously like my old computer was a little underpowered for like the adobe and everything but if you want your some, old apple yeah oh really just it wasn't for the time period i bought it but now that i like gotcha it was, all the applications were running super slow. Gotcha. So then you need to like boost up your computer. Dude, it is insane the price gouge from like, oh, this is our standard. Oh, you need this? Really? Sucks. I was. So did you get did, uh, GH to a little? Yeah. So okay, I can't cool. complain too okay, much. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> but it still sucks. Like I don't want oh, them yeah. to spend the money For either. For sure. So. Yeah. But it makes it a little bit better that's not coming out of your own yeah. pocket. But It did. Yeah. Well, that's cool, cool little. Uh, yeah, I guess we're probably a tech podcast. Now. Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah. I was explaining branding for <laughs> Apple. Um, what else, man, dude? I was uh, I don't know. This is actually kind of funny. This is so random. I don't even know how my brain got here. I'm ready. Me and my wife were talking about like cheese or something. Sweet. I don't know if it was Wisconsin or what, but then all of a sudden my brain jumped. Yeah. Can animals get STDs? Wait, from how'd you get that from? Cheese, I don't know, man. but I remember we were talking about some sort of cheese or something, and then my brain like totally just like, do animals get STDs? You know, that's a great question because they're not practicing safe sex at all. No, because you think of okay, so I I hunt, so I know deer. <laughs> a buck will can literally breed up to like forty. I think it's up to forty uh, doe a year. A year, yeah. What a freaking... And so, douche. like, yeah. And I don't know. Probably not. But, like, okay, so why are humans the only species, then, right, that can get an STD? That's that's true. Right? Like, it seems like they would have... Okay. okay. So, Here's this is urban... my lack... Yeah, yeah. This is my lack of health class here. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> so, what... Okay, what makes an STD an STD? Like... Because STDs can also be transferred through blood, right? Like if yeah, you would give blood, an STD, the acronym is sexually transmitted disease. Right. But also, so, like, like, but is there what do you a, STDs mean? could also like through saliva? That's not an STD. No, you can't get so a, you can't it has get an STD to be through saliva. Either obviously sex or, or blood transfusion. Yeah, or like okay. using dirty needles from other people. Which I don't really which think. Which would still kind of be blood. Yeah. Which yeah, you yeah. get in your blood. But I don't think like deer are up there just like <laughs> just shooting up heroin from Hey, well, you don't deer. know, man. Yeah. So the reason I Gary, asked that is because. Pass yeah. me that needle. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I ask is like CWD. Did you ever hear of CWD, like chronic wasting disease? Mm -mm. That's in like deer. And so it's like and a what, big what, what thing. is it? Pretty much it's like a disease that transmitted. I think it's through fluids. Okay. So I guess. I think if, like, you could lick the same salt lick or something, they could get it. Mm. I'm not exactly sure how it spreads, but it's highly contagious. And then once they get it, they just pretty much just they wait dissolve. away. They're like a little zombie. Ooh. Like, they eventually just, bleh, they just, yeah. 
You can look up pictures. It's kind of crazy, but interesting. So, yeah. So that I was like, well, I guess CWD is that also that could be kind of a STD, but I guess no, it's probably more saliva. Oh, not an STD. I know. I see how you could do, dude. Ooh, okay. Here we go. But why does it start with but? But humans are not. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Distracted. <laughs> but humans are not the only animals suffering from STIs. Well, that's sexually transmitted infections. All other animals can be infected by disease transmitted during sex. Wild animals don't practice. <laughs> it literally says wild animals don't practice safe sex. Of course they have STIs. <laughs> Explains Dr. Barbara Matstrom Horistic. It's a heck of a name. Huh. A modern day Dr. Doolittle at UCLA cardiologist and consulting in Los Angeles. Okay. So they do. Okay. Wild. Interesting. Well, well, I was going to say they would have to, but like. Yeah, and then we're just kind of getting into medical stuff we don't need to get into. I was yeah. Gonna, we don't know what we're talking about. In that. Sorry if anyone's listening, man. Yeah. We are How often do animals there, get an STD? That's kind of interesting. I bet, okay, here's a here's a fun one. What animal do you think gets STDs the most often? What Ooh, animal do you think's kind of... I'm thinking bunnies. Oh, dude, true. I was actually kind of thinking some kangaroos. They just seem dirty. Uh, yeah, bunnies for sure. Let's look up... This is kind of a weird segment, but I'm kind of in it now. It's a weird bit. What animals... Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh, what is... animals get get the most jealous? That's interesting. Oh, uh-huh. STDs. This is kind of. Did you watch? It's kind of in a little seg side rabbit trail. Speaking of rabbits, it's a rabbit trail. Yeah. So, did you watch any of the um, Tom Brady roast? Did no. you see any clips of that? Mm-mm. It's kind of funny. You know who Gronk is? Yeah. Gronkowski. They, yeah. So they were all like, because you know how roasts are. Like yeah. you kind of roast Tom Brady, but you roast everyone else that's yep. there. And so I watched I watched some segments of like, they were roasting Gronk for like being stupid and like not being able to read and stuff. And then he comes up and it's like his turn to roast Tom Brady. <laughs> and he like is like, I'm here to prove everyone wrong that I'm not stupid. And he bombs. Oh, no It's way. so funny. <laughs> like... There was literally so Kevin Hart was hosting it, mm-hmm. and there was that one point where he like stopped and totally forgot who he was and was like looking <laughs> at the top of teleprompter and Kevin Hart's like, "Sound it out, Gronk! <laughs> Sound it out!" Like he like it was like all the things that were said about him like just came true at that moment. Exactly. That's where like he awesome. was just he seemed so dumb, and then at the end of it, he's like. Yeah, I know. I know I'm dumb. <laughs> like, it was like, bro, you, this is so sad. Oh, uh, poor Gronk. It was so funny, though. But he just totally, like, play football first. And then marks. he was, he would, like, tell jokes. He would, uh, were totally, like, oh, this was, yeah, this is not a written joke. <laughs> You're just scripted. going for it. And at the end, he's like, yeah, he's like, I just thought of that just now. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, everyone knew. Everyone knew. knew. Everyone knew. <laughs> Do you so think you're funny. smarter than Gronk? Uh, I think like overall IQ, yes. Football smarts, no. Well, yeah, like I think clearly. he's, I think he's actually a really smart player. But yeah, I think he's definitely got some signs of having all the concussions <laughs> oh, that he's yeah, had. Dude. So, do you think you are? No, smarter than Gronk. No, dude. really. I in plumbing, I'm smarter than Gronk in in any specific field. But overall, no. Gotcha. I don't know. Dude, I'm over here spelling five words a minute, dog. I would say... Mm, it's hard okay, to tell. Do you think that he's actually dumb or it's like kind of a publicity stunt? Do you think he's That's faking everyone? Thought. That is a good thought. He could be. Because that like... Like it's now his persona. Yeah, and, and now like, like if it gets him viral like views right, or whatever. It's clickbait for him. Yeah. That is that is true. That'd I think it's crazy. some of both. Yeah, I think he stupid. plays it a little bit, but I think it's some of like he's just definitely had one too many concussions. <laughs> but that's a great question. That makes sense. 
dude i, I guess know. we'll have him on for our next podcast yeah, and we no, can find we'll, out he'll be hitting us freaking up dude now yeah. that we got a title <laughs> a freaking <laughs> title dude <laughs> freaking fancy <laughs> um i honestly don't have anything for this podcast i did not prepare yeah one bit that's for all right well we also decided we were doing it like yeah 20 but minutes uh ago. what else man not much um let me think here new computer yep it's about it yeah dude we've got a lot of rain here late man dude we did it's been so rainy do you see my grass it is so high really i keep trying to mow and then it rains yep and then i fall asleep or something and take a nap when it's nice and then it rains has your landlord come by yet nah, and been recently. like hey mow come into your house oh boy Mow that dang lawn. No, he has, hasn't. Has he said anything recently? No, there honestly hasn't been too many like That's funny situations sad, or stories. Right, they've like, just been... Interesting things in my life right now. My life's pretty, yeah. pretty mundane, if you would call it that. Because that one time your landlord came in, that was hilarious. Rich. That was um, funny. Yeah, no, nothing's really... Nothing crazy's been happening. I even I haven't had any really funny like bathroom incidents or anything. Yeah. I mean, bathroom incidents are right. funny. So, nothing like it's that. True. No one busting in on stalls or nothing. No accidents. I'm trying to even think, like, what do I do? Yeah. Any interesting things happened to you recently? Uh, well, I was just in Nashville. That was sweet. How was that? Yeah, That was let's, good. Let's, with uh, a friend. We can touch on friends. that. Oh, what friends did you go down with? Well, I went with this man named Jeffro. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Dude, he was like... He was kind of crazy. He got himself in some bad situations with these old ladies. Is he like... (laughs) He's got a pretty low IQ, right? (laughs) Yeah, so people call him uh, Baby Gronk. Yeah, let's go into that. Yeah. What would you say about Nashville? Oh. What are what are your takeaways? Well, I would say, okay, so obviously we went down there. We got down there. <laughs> Saturday went for a little bit of an extended weekend. I love the city. I thought it was sweet. I would recommend it to anyone because I think it's a city unlike most for the fact of the live music. Um, right. And kind of just the overall feel of like Broadway area. I think right. kind of the outskirts of the city are it's a city. Right. The Broadway it's spot's just any cool. City. What I would say the consensus I came to, I believe, is younger man city. Obviously if you got kids, hindsight twenty twenty, like right. not the best trip because it's super freaking loud. Pretty much the city only comes alive at like ten o'clock at night, which right. if you have a kid, you're putting them to bed. So it's like that's not the best thing. But yeah, if it's like if you just got a bunch of buddies, heck of a trip. I think right. it's sweet. Um honestly though, we didn't like see any of the like Grand Old Opry or nothing like that. I don't even right. know where that is, but apparently Which, there that's wasn't not any out. shows during our time no, really. That's true. So or there might have been one, but it was like I don't know who it is. Yeah, it was probably I think we looked it up, but did we actually? I think so. <laughs> but the zoo was sick. I love the zoo. The zoo was kind of a sweet zoo, yeah. man. We saw some kangaroos. And I we do believe, some kangaroos. actually, when we were there, that one of the uh, like the staff members told me that almost 46% of all their animals have an STD. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's that crazy. That is wild. So, dude, that zoo is be crazy. Uh, well, dude. we saw it. The turtle. Yeah. We walked by a oh, turtle stand, yeah. man. This is a funny story to tell. Yep. Hit it. So... We walked by, there's these two turtles, and then there's this... enclosure, not just on the pathway. Right. Obviously, it was in this <laughs> glass enclosure, and it was this uh, little girl and the and her brother, and then the mom. And the little girl was like, Mom, why is that turtle on top of him? Or on top of her. I guess it was probably her. Yeah. I already bought your story, man. You want to tell it? Let's just move on from there. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, it, it was you funny. It. You got a good crack. Got a good, got a good laugh out of it. Uh, so yeah, these turtles were kind of going at it, and this mom was like, "All right, let's uh, move, move on, on to the next one." And the next so. item on the tour, dude. And there was oh my word! Now that we're talking about well, not the turtles, but the zoo and children, right? 
although that can be taken in a weird light until I explain <laughs> this. Dude, do you? There was this little. I'm gonna call him. What am I gonna call him? He's not a little devil child. That's a little rude. He was not happy though. Do you remember that kid in the freaking little snake enclosure? Oh my word! Did Dog. you see him? Okay, let's I let's even get see into him. this I segment heard him. because obviously we're qualified. This kid. All right, we'll give you some backstory first, and then we'll really we'll really rip into it and really yeah. dissect this this issue with society that we're struggling with right now. <laughs> so let's just think about how we want to address this. So anywho, there's this kid and just disrupting everything. <laughs> Like screaming, screaming bloody murder. Bloody freaking murder. And just like on the floor, kicking and stream, screaming. And <laughs> screaming. He's he's just screaming. Saying, What's just, up, y'all? Uh, I'm pissed. <laughs> I am kicking. <laughs> hey, <laughs> sub to me for more. Dude, honestly, on another note, that could actually probably happen in the future. That would not surprise me at all. Like some kid right. like... He's having a meltdown and he like compromises with his parents. Like, if you don't get me these marshmallow puffs, I'm going to say to all my viewers that Mm -hmm. you hit me. Yeah. Anywho, this kid was an absolute tarred bucket. And not not saying that bias, like nothing against him. Great kid. Great kid. Um, But just being an absolute tard. Screaming his head off. And do you think, and then obviously... No shade to the mother, but she's kind of just like, oh, sweetie, stop, stop, sweetie. Like, oh, no. get up. Like, yeah. Not doing a darn thing. With that wave, the like tidal wave of gentle parenting, I think we'll see that more and more with like kids just being chaotic. Because I know if mm. I would have did that, when I, dude. Oh, yeah. There would have been the wrath of the Lord coming down on me when I got home. Actually, wrath of the Lord coming down as a paddle. Yeah. (laughs) Onto my backside. (laughs) Um, It wouldn't even have waited till I got home. Like, I would have been drug out to the car and dosy freaking dope. Yeah. Maybe even the family bathroom. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Maybe I would have just got yoked into the snake enclosure. (laughs) right into the mountain lines and i do think that is a thing that we will continuously see more and more of because of the whole gentle parent like she didn't do a thing right and hey i'm not a parent so i can't say anything but hindsight like or not hindsight's not the right word in my perception of how i will be as a parent I don't think I'm going to let that stuff slide because right. it's crazy. Okay, do you – this is a question. Do you think gentle parenting is going to keep growing? No, I think Cause, it's okay, already I feel like, kind of hit its peak. Yeah, because I feel like gentle parenting is kind of like a millennial thing. Yeah. And I feel like so now – now millennials are kind, – not that they're done having kids, but they're kind of like there. You know what I mean? Now it's kind of yeah. like the next generation that have like seen gentle parenting and be like, oh, that yeah. looks terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I kind of agree with you. I think it's kind of at its peak. And obviously, there's still going to be more yeah, gentle but the parenting, thing, but the it's thing also with like society is like everything is a pendulum. Right. So it's like it's swung far, and maybe it's still growing a little bit. Um, I think the boy, and we're not trying to get political up in here, um, <laughs> but like maybe with like the the push on the woke agenda. It stays uh-huh. for a little bit, but I do feel like even maybe the woke agenda is slowing down a little. I don't oh, know. I think so too. Did you hear? This is now we're getting full. Oh, uh, let's man. get into you it. You ready baby. for this? Let's dive into. Let's this, do it. Baby. All the so all the um like the the co- rallies on the college campuses. I'll get there eventually. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about any. Really? So there's like all these rallies and like what are colleges. they regarding? It's all like the anti-Israel like free oh, Palestine, Palestine yeah, movements. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah, so I've heard about them. Yeah, so they're like on the college campuses because mm-hmm. apparently colleges have those. I don't totally understand. I haven't looked into it that much why they're on these colleges, but how they have a lot of these like fines out of money and whatever, whatever. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> nah, nothing. I just my hair Anyhow, was messy. There's like these videos of these frat bros coming out 
on these on these rallies and just start singing the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> and like just start singing awesome. the national anthem. God bless yeah. freaking America. And so baby. it's just hilarious. So we're like we're already seeing like yeah, because it's like frat bros, dude. Oh yeah, like, dude. Frat bros have the worst like. What is it? Rep- no. Repertoire? Yeah, repertoire out of pretty much anyone. You know repertoire. what I'm saying? Repertoire. Because yeah. they're like, frat bro, <laughs> Kevin, what's yeah. up, dude? That is funny because they're like, even they're like, this is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do think, I don't know if it's at its peak, but I do think people are starting to see the downfalls of it. Right. Like, and don't get me wrong. I think, well, do I think that? Let me formulate my thoughts a little bit better here, baby. Um, yeah, I think some like traditional parenting, like what we're calling traditional, where it's like you spank your kid for discipline and that's all you do. I don't think that's 100% correct because like a lot of it maybe, maybe, I don't know. I wasn't a parent in the 50s or whatever, right. but like... It seems like from a 25-year-old's perspective on history and life and the world that there was like, it was the, and they're called like the silent generation. Like there wasn't, like you didn't really talk about anything, you just whipped. Right. And you talked never. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like, oh, hey, like, I don't know, I got a box of crayons over here and I lost the yellow one and then (laughs) bell comes off and you get cracked. Like, dude. So, so you have that. Well, extreme. that's on them, man. They lost yeah, the yellow crayon, and yellow is the most sacred color in the crayon box. That Crayola, baby. Um, I feel like I'm just doing Theo Vaughn impersonations, and I'm not even trying. But it's like <laughs> in my head, and it's impeded. right when you start podcasting, <laughs> yeah. it just comes out. Yeah, I know. Anywho, um, what were we saying? Bad the children, spirit of Theo beatings, Vaughn. Uh, the belt. Yeah, yeah. So, like. I do think, obviously, spanking, pro-spanking, because I, when I was growing up, I definitely needed it for freaking sure, but I don't think it's always the first resort. Like, it's like, hey, or if it is a first resort, at least talk to them later and like, dude, this is why you got spanked. Right, yeah. Like, because I do think at some points it's like, it is a first resort. Like, oh, what? You like robbed right. a bank? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. If it's like if it if it's something that requires immediate yeah, like, like if you're harming other children and you're being a right. scumbag like that then you're getting spanked. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to say I don't ever want to yell at my kids for something dumb, but like if my kids running in the middle of the street, oh, I'm gonna yell at my kid. One hundred percent. And I'm gonna yell. I'm gonna like and put the, the fear of God be there in with him. their iPhone. Right. Hey, ladies. Right. Here's in the stroller group. It's true. Like this creep. But if my kid spilled his milk, I'm, oh, I don't yeah, want to yell at him. Definitely you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. But there's like a level of like, you got to like, you got to, the yeah. level of seriousness, you also want to up your discipline and your For intensity sure. because, to that level. And something too is like, even with that situation down in Nashville at the zoo, like right from an outsider's perspective, and I obviously don't know the chemical makeup of that kid's brain and what he's thinking, but- from an outsider's perspective, it's like, oh, that kid runs that family. Like, right. The parent, obviously, should be the one in charge, and that kid was totally in charge. Right. Like, he was just doing whatever the flip he wanted, and it's like, no, that's not right. And then, like, even looking, and even from my own past, like, dude, when I get spanked, or when I got, <laughs> I don't get spanked anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> Anna. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was getting spanked growing up, like, you hate your parent in the moment. You're like, right. you trash bag piece of garbage, but then you grow up and you're 25 years old and it's like, oh, right. dude, I deserved every single one of those spankings. Mm-hmm. And because of those spankings, I think I'm better for it. Right. Yeah. No, for sure. So. Maybe not like every one of them, but no, like. but like you're one better. at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I don't know. And that's kind of our little segment on spanking. Um. That's yeah, fascinating. I think it's necessary. Yeah, I think. Right, I think I there's like, levels. Are you, are you spanking your daughter yet? She's five months. Oh, she's about ready to. Oh, dude, disrespect. No. <laughs> no. Okay, but I will say this: this is my little segment on parenting. Yeah, but, yeah. Hit me with it. Give so me some like, parenting wisdom. I think. 
I didn't realize how much is like a five months that you're still training them and you're still disciplining them in a way of like, dude, everything's a str- like trying to get them on our team, trying to get them to take oh, a yeah? nap, trying to get them to take a bottle. Everything's like you're training them. And even like in your laziness, you're still training them, mm, which yeah. is fascinating. Cause like, if we would let it like, I don't know if I have a good, so let's say socially. Mm-hmm. All right. So you see a lot of kids that like are very clingy to their moms. Yeah. And some kids are just clingy. Yeah. Uh, but there's also a lot of people I'm like, okay, you won't let anyone else, your kids won't let anyone else hold them probably because you didn't let anyone, let anyone hold, hold them for so long ah. or you were like so anti-social. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people these days are like, yo, for four months, I'm checking out of the world. Yeah. I'm staying at home with my kid. And that's fine if you want to do that, but you're also training them Mm -hmm. to not like anyone else pretty much. Yeah. So this kind of ties in with something that I've just been like, I guess, learning in life and growing up and being an adult. Like, not that there's, okay, so not from a moral standpoint. Obviously, there's things that are wrong in the world, but it's like, there's not that many wrong decisions. And I know this sounds like woke, but it's not like, it's just consequences. So it's like hey, if you want to party it up in your 20s and blow all your money, that's right. fine. The consequence is you're probably going to be a little poorer in your 30s and 40s and 50s. Right. Flip side of that coin, if you want to save money and be a strickler in your 20s, consequence, you're probably not going to have as much fun in your 20s, but it'll right. set you up so much better down the road. Right. And I'm realizing it's like, there's just a lot of things where it's like, all decisions have consequences. Mm-hmm. Like, even with what you're saying, like, taking or staying at home for those four months when you have a child like right it's probably nice because on you as a parent it probably gives you a little a little bit of a break but then the consequence of that is hey maybe your kid's clingy maybe down the road it's going to be a little bit more challenging and like we're gonna we're gonna umbrella that as laziness like laziness always just has a consequence of you're comfortable now and then you'll get the bad stuff later. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I think, and and there's nothing, not that there's nothing wrong with that, but like, I totally get that. Like, right. I'm not going to be like, oh, you should in the first month of having a baby, you should be back out in the world. Like, no, like I totally get if you need that break and like, you want to take that. There's always just a consequence. Right. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just like, well, you got to live with that. (laughs) Right. And there's also consequence if you like, yeah, if you don't take any time with exactly. your kid and then like like your everyone's sleep, your a health. mess everyone's yeah. a mess like you have that consequence or you never bonded with your baby and yeah. now you're just, just and then it with always goes and, to yeah. other people and never to you it's like that that to some random stranger right it's not you and you're like my dad will never show me love yeah and then you find out it's like this ain't my son <laughs> <laughs> yeah no like i think in everything it's just <laughs> <laughs> this man's Chinese and I am totally American but anywho I should have saw this coming yeah. man nope. he looked like not me I don't know that, was, that wasn't funny that was horrible my we'll landscaper <laughs> yeah. sorry too far yeah so everything's got a qu- consequence that's yeah. what I'm taking from this little it's session true. I think it's just, yeah, you're either intentional with your choices or just you're going to be, yeah, your life's just going to be what it is in a little bit. But yeah. Mm, yeah. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> let's take a, a short fiver because let's I got to hit the head and uh, do the business of the, I was going to say the Lord, but that's totally <laughs> All right, and we are back. Uh, Don't remember where we left off, but I was thinking about this when I was taking some time in the bathroom. (laughs) Um, And I've been so sick recently. So, like, got sick before Nashville. And now I'm sick. No way, you are. Yeah, I got a little Oh, that's so exciting. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, man. Um, (laughs) Thanks for being excited for me. Yeah, I'm super. Anyways... So, like, I've been sick for, like, three weeks now. Sheesh. And in my sickness endeavor, I am learned a couple things. A, it might be allergies because everyone else is all sick. Okay. I never got allergies, which sucks because hmm. 25 now and now 
allergies are there knocking at my front you door. You think so? You think it's allergies? That's what everyone says. But I don't know. Like, but so that's one observation, and we can yep. dissect that later. Second observation, even with this podcast, it is much harder to laugh when you are sick. Uh huh. I realize that. Like, even down right. in Nashville, and just like having interactions with people, like laugh it i don't know i don't know if it's because you can't breathe or just like you're not in a fun state right you just don't feel like going yeah no and like even when you do laugh it sounds ungenuine because you're sick and like and your fake laugh because everyone kind of has like a sympathy like yeah yeah like Like, that's funny but i'm not like belly laughing but like when you're sick it's you're not doing that no (laughs) ha ha like i was watching i was watching horrible bosses the other day, like the okay, clips. yeah, yeah, super funny movie, right? And like, I just sat there like I was at a freaking nothing, yeah, like a like I was at a law reading or something mm. where they read the law to you, right? And it was just like, like an all day conference, yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, speaking of all day conferences and law readings, <laughs> I got a letter in the mail. Okay. I'm on jury duty, baby. What? Let's yeah. go. I'm kind of stoked about Dude. it. Dude. Apparently, jury duty is super boring, but it's like a th- I do need to take But you work. get paid like $3 an hour. No, it's $9 a day. What? <laughs> yeah. Huge money. So, okay. So, I know that why I did not change that yet. Like I don't it's know, but so I'm stupid. I put all that money into my startup, dude. Yo. Huge. Yo, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's like $3 after you buy Starbucks coffee. Oh, dude. Good thing I don't drink coffee. So, yeah, I got jury duty, man. That's sweet. When do you go in? I don't know. Nice. I got the letter the other day. I think I'm supposed to respond, and I didn't. Um, Yeah. So, they'll probably send out a second notice. They always send a second notice. You're fine until the third. That's been my experiences with bills, with the IRS, with stuff like that. Um, oh, my word. But yeah, I don't know. I've never I've never served on jury duty before. Me neither. So apparently I've been talking to some other jurors that have been drawn in by the system. Yep. And a lot of them, you don't even get assigned a case. Right. Like you just go in and you're literally sitting in a room for six, hours. Because you have hours. to be accepted. Yeah. And sometimes they, you get, ex- like enough people get accepted before you. Yeah. Or, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. But do you know anyone who's actually like been yeah, accepted and someone, done it? Ooh, I do. I have this fragment of a memory in my brain and I can't piece it together with the other fragment of who the person's name was. Right. But uh, they actually got on a murder case. Oh. And it was like, uh, I think, I don't, mm, I'm not going to say that because I don't actually know how long they were on it, but it was like for a pretty long right. time. That could be That's totally made cool. up too. Isn't I don't kind know. Of, this is just a side note as well. This is kind of a like weird. This is just like where America's at, where it's like, oh, a murder case. Yeah. That'd be fun. Like we just love. This it's so murder funny how we love like every television show is about crime murder. thrillers. Yeah. Okay, here's but anyhow, something too. Yeah. Um, with murder mysteries, like. I feel like like I'm not super into like murder shows or like crime shows. Right. I don't know, but I feel like it's a huge group of people that like love that type of stuff. Oh yeah. And like that the psycho psychological drama. Yeah. Where it's like or thrill twisted. psychological thriller. Like, it's like Yeah. Honestly, if you're watching that, you might be a little twisted yourself. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like weird. And now, so like I feel like in the past five years. We've had a lot of serial killer shows. Oh, yeah. Like, like the Jeffrey crime, Dahmer. The like the crime, dude yeah, in the yep. Mormon people. Brother B. Like stuff right. like that where it's just like. But she wasn't a serial killer. No, he was, was just, just weird. Like, a lot of cult and yeah, serial cult killer and stuff. Yeah, serial killer stuff. Yeah. You think that has anything to do with gentle parenting? <laughs> Let me think about that a little bit. No. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't think so. That was just a stupid segment. It is um, just funny, though, where. Would you say, would you say it's over fifty percent of shows are crime related, or like I would yeah, like it seems like fifty percent some sort of crime, some sort of sure. crime yeah. related. Maybe it's just like jaywalking, or maybe just doing some. Okay, pe- no, 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 some no, 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 no. Stuff, I mean, but... like, I mean, either like a cop show or like. A, I love cops. 
cops is good. Oh, but man, you know I what I mean? Cops. Like and I like NCIS. <laughs> 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 New Living Translation. Yes, bro. and I mean shows. New Living Translation, brother. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think 50 percent are like cop shows? Probably. Or detective and then the shows? other 50 percent's just like real estate drama shows, dude. Oh yeah, real estate drama yeah, shows are like, rage now too. My wife has been on a kick with that stuff. With the selling, selling sunset, OC, selling yeah. OC. Dude, it is the biggest load of malarkey. Like I watch, like I'll sit down and like she'll be watching it, and I'm just like, yeah. This is insane. This is absolutely like, is there anyone, and I know there is, but like the amount of drama in those people's lives, and obviously it's for television. Right. Like it's not actually real because nothing yeah. is real. We're in the matrix. But um, <laughs> we ate the red pill. Red pill, baby. Uh, like, do you think there's actually like a lot of people that have that amount of drama where it's like they're just festering over it? I don't know. No, I don't think I don't so either. Think so it's like it's insane. But why? And I'm not throwing women under the bus here. I'm not. Why do women not love to that be sexist? Stuff? Not to be sexist, but <laughs> maybe we are a little sexist. I don't know. Right. Like, why do they just thrive on that stuff? Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, I don't know either. And it and, it's okay, definitely so bothered me. At let, times. Let's break it down because I do understand it. A, it's like women that are all glammed up. So obviously that appeals to women. There's a bunch of fashion in it. Like right. their outfits are crazy. So and I the understand houses that. are sick. The houses the are houses sick. are cool. I will give it. That. Um, and with the selling OC one, they're bringing like male real estate agents in. And they're like, right, good looking. Yeah, I guess. they're good looking. Yeah. Like I'm just gonna say it. Okay, <laughs> they're nice. Uh, the business side is cool. It is. So but, I get where it's coming from, but the overwhelming drama is just like none oh, of that it's is so worth much. It. Yeah. But they love it. I don't like. I get it, but I don't get it because I'm a man, and they're a woman. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I don't totally. I don't quite understand it yet. But yeah, so we got crime shows and drama, and real straight dramas, real and straight. fake drama, fake drama. Yeah, I don't get it, but also like, dude, give me a good story. Oh, dude, and I'll I'm like the there, like a good plot, mm. and I'm there. So I do kind of get like how you can just get totally like, engulfed, engulfed in something oh, not real. Yeah. But I just don't get the pull to drama shows. No, but like, oh yeah, I feel like humans have been craving stories since the beginning of time. Like even right. with the Bible, it's just. But like, I guess drama is just a different story. Yeah, true. Or no, it's a. Is drama a story or does drama, is drama a subcategory of a story? Probably a subcategory. Because like to have a good story, you do need some sort of drama. Right. And that's why like in the beginning of this, we're like, hey, what's been happening in our life? Nothing. We didn't have a good story because there was literally no drama. Right. Ooh, yeah. You might be honest. So maybe we should come out with some fake drama to make our podcast more interesting. Yeah. Let's be like every other podcaster and YouTuber and just create fights. So how do you feel about your mom still spanking you at 25 (laughs) now, man? Well, it's honestly toned down a little bit. (laughs) Right. So... And so what does your wife think about her just coming over yeah, and spanking you? Yeah, I mean, we're you? trying to figure out how, like, the manufacturing of lies work and <laughs> how much we're getting paid by my parents. <laughs> and just, yeah, it's, right. a, it's a big mess, you know, but boy, does it just get the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel like if you're getting spanked and you're 25, like, you're a part of a cult. Oh, yeah. Or you just don't know how to leave an abusive relationship. That's, also that's true. sad and very solemn, yeah, but also true. Yeah, let's... But you probably are in a call. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What? Oh, here's a here's a nice little fun topic for us. What is like a caught you think you could actually get pulled into? Oh, Like okay. if you had to join... Like, like... What am I trying to say here? A caught that makes kind of like... Oh, I could see how someone could potentially actually fall for that. Clearly, not a me- call that like a that I would be like, oh, that's cool. Are you saying like a cult that makes sense, or a cult that be like, oh, that'd be cool to join? Well, I feel like it's so. I'm thinking of like what cult are we talking about? We call it a, like because I was thinking like the alien cult. You know what I mean? That like believes that aliens are real. Not or really, but I can kind of see rel- like. No, 
know, cults doesn't have to do with religion. Yeah, are we KKK thinking of purely religious cults? Or are we thinking like any like weird? Yeah, let's cult? go with any weird cult. Okay. Because I our, our conspiracy theory, they're not a cult though. But I would say there's kind of like cults in them of like groups of people that band together that are like. Yeah, maybe maybe weird. how we start this is we actually just look up the meaning of a cult. That's true. And are like most cults religious? I think a lot of them are. Which why is or that spiritual a thing? or whatever? Why are most cults religious? That kind of doesn't bother me, but now it bothers me because I said it. Right. Hit me with the definition of a cult, cult. and okay. then we'll go from there. The definition of a cult. Oh, okay. So in this definition, well, let's go to Merriam-Webster because they are the OGs right. of definition. They're second best after Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved Wikipedia growing up. Okay, the number one. Um, what the, what am I looking for? The number one definition for caught a religion regarded as unorthodox or. So, some gronk word sound it out pronounce yeah um also it bodies of dude i don't even know that's that's not the definition I all right pronounce. i have one yeah here. you read it you read it a relatively small group of people having beliefs or practices especially relating to religion that are regarded by others as strange or sinister as imposing excessive control over members Ooh, yeah. So it's the obsessive control. Right. So that doesn't quite... Because I think some of like those weird cults, in quotes, that are like, you know, the aliens yeah. are still there, that are like these weird group of people, yeah. kind of nerds in the basement, probably wouldn't have the same control or like weird hierarchy as what a normal cult would have that we would think of. So maybe those aren't actually cults. Okay. Ooh, what the? What else you got? So right now I'm looking up the top 10 cults. And the first one is Children of God, which I don't know if that's like just Christianity. Or no, the Children of God in the 1960s, what made the cult's belief devout for mainstream religion and a group of people adopted it. I don't know. So apparently that's one. Let's just go to number one. What's the number one cult? No one cares about number 10 anyways. Um, would they consider Mormon? Yeah, Mormons definitely. Yeah, I mean, Mormon I would, would consider a that a cult. Or is that a but religion? But that's a, religion a religion is a cult. But I guess there's probably cults in the Mormon. Okay, I haven't heard of this. Is the top ten cults, and I haven't heard of one of these. So clearly, so wait, this website's some of them. trash. Uh well, you have the Children of God. You got Heaven's Gate. You got Alum Shakiro. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, to no, be honest. No, but Branch Davison. Yeah, we know that one. That's uh, Waco. Oh, that's Waco? I think so. That's Waco. And it's not even Davison. It's David Diane's or some shenanigans. Oh, so, so just... maybe it's not. But no, it looks like Davison. Um, they... Okay. Well, The Illuminati. I guess they're called. Is that actually? That's not. I don't that's... know. It's number so... five. The Manson family. I don't Interesting. know. Interesting. The People's Temple. The Movement of Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. That seems like a mouthful. I don't even think that's a call. And then <laughs> that's it. And I literally haven't heard of a single one of those. So let's go to... Maybe it's the Branch Davidians or something that was Waco. Davidians. That's what it Div- was. That's Is that what, what it was? Yeah. Oh, I just okay. didn't know how so to say it. Waco. Okay. So that's Waco, Texas. Um... Dude, do you think since I'm looking up cults, I'm going to get like all these ads where it's like, Probably. join our cult now for only nine ninety nine. But also, you're not... <laughs> At the value of $30, <laughs> it is this price. For a limited time, please call 1-800- But you're not cults. a hedge fund manager, so you don't have to that's, worry about getting pulled into a true. cult. I don't need to figure out anything with that. Um, ooh, 10 of the deadliest cults. Let's see what is deadly, uh, because we love true crime uh, uh, podcasts. There's a okay, ton of true okay. crime podcasts. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. Do you ever listen to any? No. Yeah. I've done some, but I don't know. It is wild for now having a podcast. No, it's not a podcast. We have a podcast. Right. We have cover art now. It's true. And it's kind of sweet. Just a taste. Oh, just a freaking taste. Oh, just this is getting taste. like... Just a taste. 
Anyways, before that. What were we saying? Oh, yeah. Cults. For having a podcast now, I don't actually listen to that many podcasts. Gotcha. Isn't that kind of hypocritical? That is kind of crazy. Like, you just getting a- your fill in on <laughs> yeah. Tuesday nights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm a narcissist because like, I don't need anyone else's podcast. <laughs> right. Maybe. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. I could, could be. be. All right. Say a word. We're going to say one, two, three, and we're going to say a word. Ready, set, one, two, three, you. Philanthropy. Oh. oh. What'd you say? I said you. Oh. Because if you said me, then you're definitely a narcissist, but I think you've passed the test. Wait, so that means you're, in that logic, then you're obsessed with me. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, no. Stop. Dude. Uh, um, Anyways, what? moving on. <laughs> um, yeah. Psh, you're, yeah. Caught's. Dude. Philanthropy? What is philanthropy? Isn't that like the study of plants or something? No, or, that's uh, horticulture. Oh, no. Philanthropy or. is... <laughs> oh, okay, all dude, I know of that word yeah, is... Yeah, I might not in, be smarter than Grok. I'm sorry, Grok. Iron Man, on you. he says he's a billionaire playboy philanthropist. Right. It's like a weird title. Is it like an inventor or like a... Like a a Here, rich should person? I Google it? Yeah, look it up because I 100% don't know how to spell philanthropist. Is it a hard piss at the end? <laughs> philanthropist? <P-I-S-T>. Yeah. <laughs> Is someone who seeks to improve or promote the welfare of others. Oh. So you're kind of right with that. I'm a philanthropist. Yeah, because you are Because I was to like you. My... I was thinking about you. Yeah. You are Or I'm a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> Every uh, stalker just gets freaking handcuffed. No, I'm a philanthropist, dude. So it's literally just someone who seeks to improve the Society. welfare of others. Yeah, interesting. So you could put on your resume philanthropist with wow. a hard piss at the end. Do you know who the top th- philanthropist in the United States is? Oh, in the United States, no. But I was gonna guess either Mother Teresa or Gandhi. No, it's. Paul Tudor Jones. I'm sorry I set you up to fail. I don't know who uh, this Paul guy Rudd. Is. It's just a hedge fund manager. Okay, there's no shot a hedge fund manager. Is it a hedge fund manager? He said, actually? Is known as a top philanthropist of the United States. Interesting. So I guess he's just super rich and has what a is an big actual foundation. hedge fund? I don't know. I don't think a lot of people know. So, so all I know is like generally there's I a scandal thought, with those guys and they make a. I always thought it was like an investment manager, kind of, but That's for a what massive I fund. For a massive, right? So they just so they're investing so much money that their little, like point five percent that they make is an astronomical amount. Yeah, that makes sense. But what is an extra hedge fund of like? I is that know. just? I feel like I got a booger just sitting on the tip of my nose right now. I know that's kind of graphic, but that's on, just what I'm going through yeah. right now. It's a little hedge. <laughs> we'll find up. Oh, yeah. Um, what am I looking up? Definition so it's of a hedge fund. Pool of money invested in stocks and other assets. Oh, nice. It's generally more aggressive, riskier, and more exclusive than mutual funds. So it's just a little bit. So it's just some fun. Kind of like a mutual fund, but just a yeah, little but different, of being I guess. Mutual, it's being hedged. <laughs> and it's sometimes it's so it's a limited partnership and in private investors, I guess. Yeah. So it's private investors. Honestly, if I would have a property, I would invest in hedges. They make your property look so much better than And they're does. fun. And they're fun. Duh. Yeah. Hedge fund. <laughs> Pitch that on Shark Tank, dude. We could get Gronk to sell so it to him. <laughs> he's basically just a really big landscaper. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's improving other people's lives by Hedge putting fun. up hedges <laughs> that are fun. Duh. So we should become these hedge fund guys. <laughs> right. Do you think it's been every boy's, not dream, but on his mind at some point to start a landscaping business? I've thought about starting a landscaping business when I was like 16. I guess I did a little bit, but I not think much. every okay man at right. some point's like, should I get into landscaping? Right. This sounds bad, but it's, I feel like it's also... It's not probably not the easiest startup, but it's also like one of the easiest starts up. You just need a mower and you just go mow people's yeah. grass. Or if you're and everyone really poor, it. you could just get one of them old time sickles and just like 
right. swipe in their grass. So I feel like it's just like one of those easiest startup things where it's like everyone kind of thinks about it. Yeah, there's it. always going to be demand. Right. Unless we are in a scorched earth type of Right. Deal. And no one's like, obviously some people are really picky about their lawns, but no one's like, you messed up my lawn, it's ruined forever. No, it's ruined for a week. Yeah. You and know what I mean? It's like, it's still got cut at the end of the day. Right. So, so I feel like even painting a lot of people can do. But, like, you mess up painting, there's a lot at risk. Yeah, people are A dead. lawn is like, uh, It grows cares? back. Yeah. It's like it's like a barber for the earth, but they don't have as much at stake. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Like, because it grows back so, so fast. Yeah. So, pretty so who's much. Your, who's your barber, dude? <laughs> dude, right now, great clips, but I'm on, I'm on the Fritz. Really? I'm on the Fritz of great clips. Yeah. Yeah, my wife wants me to leave Great Clips. Wants yeah. me to break up with Great Clips. Dude, I've I had been, a couple uh, bad experiences. As you know, I have cut a couple heads in my. Or, well, that's not <laughs> weird. I haven't cut heads. I've cut a couple heads of hair in my day. Right. And like, it's almost this bittersweet thing because obviously, like, now that I'm in the committed covenant of marriage, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, and we're recording. <laughs> Turn that off. That's going to be the extra noise. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's going to pick it up. <laughs> Can I turn on the washing machine? No, that's even longer. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're done here in like 10 minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll turn it up afterwards. Goodness. <laughs> it wasn't that loud. Yeah, that's... <laughs> no, that's going to be loud. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we got a little bit of anarchy up in so the funny. studio. Holy moly. I love it. Um, man, what were we saying? Probably something about your wife. No. Starting laundry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, on the laundry tone and me cutting hair, um, <laughs> obviously I was doing that for a while, got a little bit of a clientele. And, like, dipping out of it's, like, really nice. Like, I'm trying to slow down and... Right. Just live in retirement, you know? Right. And Well, you've made so much oh, money off of it, so hedge fund type money. Yeah. But uh it is like almost a sad thing where it's like people are going elsewhere now. Mm-hmm. I don't even really want to cut their hair anymore. But then when they but go somewhere else, them. yeah. It's like, ah, I used to do that. Right. It's weird. Like it's this weird phenomenon that I'm dealing with in my brain. So yeah. It's like you don't want them, but you don't want anyone else to want them. Yeah, it's like I it's like the girl that friend zoned you. Like mm. she doesn't want you to get a boyfriend, but right. she's never gonna date you. Yeah. She just wants to use you for like emotional support. Right. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need an emotional support group. Yeah. Maybe I should get another puppy. <laughs> Cause the last Probably. one worked out so well. Yeah. Uh gentle parenting. Yep. Um yeah, no, it's been a it's been a good couple years. <laughs> oh yeah, so you're who who are you taking as your normal clients now? Do you have is it just like family now or Yeah, it's pretty much down I windowed it down to like family and just close friends. Yeah. Um and obviously if you're like, "Hey, I'm in a pinch." Yeah, I'll cut your hair, but I don't want to like I don't want to start this long-term relationship thing. Like I'm just right. not really looking for commitment right now. Yeah. I just want to have fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> with your haircuts. Yeah, with my haircuts. Yeah. Dude, that's pretty that's nuts, man. Mhm. But so now you're kind of a little jealous. Down. Yeah. I don't even know if it's jealousy, it's just like I no longer can have that credential maybe. I don't know if it's like an insecure, like an insecurity thing, or if it's just like I like being an interesting person, and now it's like I'm giving that up, so I'm not as interesting. I don't know. I don't. It mm. might be an insecurity. I'm not 100 percent sure. That's fascinating. So, mm-hmm. like, who are you losing them to? Who are you losing your customer base to? Well, I'm kind of turning them away. Right. And then so, like, going elsewhere. You so you probably should have sold your business to like. Oh, I should have when it was in its prime. Be should like, have sold hey, I'll my give you my customer. Base. Yeah. Oh, I could have made probably like $4. fifty bucks. <laughs> Yeah. No, a lot of them. We'll do a little plug. Send them over to Chad's Barbershop. Mm-hmm. Right in the square because they are phenomenal over there. Uh, love those dudes. They cut right. phenomenal. Phenomenal heads of hair. 
Um, make and it for look our real first real. sponsor, we have <laughs> yeah, dude, imagine Chad's Barbershop. Little Chad just showing his little mug around here. Uh, <sighs> that'd be great. But yeah, no, Chad's Barbershop, great place. I would recommend them for anyone if you're looking to get that head trimmed. Yeah. That hedged funded. That was dumb. Uh, let's not That's dwell right. on that one. Hmm. New material money. Yeah, it's cool. So you just recommend them to Chad. And yeah. Yep. Send them over there. And they're always pumped. And that's what I like. Like, they love, they're like, dude, they're sweet. It's like, right. So even with me, like, getting out of the game, but I'm still trying to improve the lives of others, I am a philanthropist. Oh, totally. <laughs> and everyone at Chad's a philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even talk. That's a hard word to say. Say that three times fast. It is. Or philanthropomorphism, dude. That's the the act of phil- philanthropy while you're kind of going through your own... While you're a Mormon? <laughs> yeah. Philanthropomormonism. <laughs> that was stupid. Anywho. Um, dude, what else do we got? What else do we got? We're pretty much winding down. Yeah. Should we hit... Do you want to you hit a little inspirational Tonight, section? Uh, yeah. I'm not... I got to feel something inspirational, though, before I just... Yeah, so if you guys missed the last last moment, we're just going to have a little bit here of just some inspirational moments of if you're feeling a little down, if you're Mm. feeling a little lack of purpose in this moment, Mm. a little bit like, hey, why am I here? Yeah. Um, We just want to just really encourage you with some instrumental music Mm -hmm. and a whole lot of nothing. Spoken word, (laughs) baby. Yeah, a whole lot of random off the cuff spoken word oh yeah coming straight from i will i don't even want to say the heart probably just an empty mind oh, dude i just <laughs> yeah i don't think it's anywhere near a heart i don't think it's might be the liver it's coming from too i don't know right you'll never know let's cue up that music and we'll see where this segment takes all us. right it's coming mm. all right so for this for this first song it's entitled peace of mind and we have mm. by the artist Van Vogel Ensemble. Mm, yes. And when you have that peace of mind and you have that clarity up mm, in your cranium, clarity right in the front of your occipital lobe, you know, right up in that medulla oblongata and your mind is clear, you can just look around at the world, you can look at life. And everyone can be their own philanthropist with a hard piss at you. You know, just helping out the people around you. Just looking around. And if you see that mother or that father that is just gentle parenting their child, and you see that kid just scream right next to the turtle enclosure, or maybe next to that bird cage. Maybe he's just walking down the street right next to that hot dog cart. And he's just causing some mayhem in the streets and maybe you're that person in that cage oh maybe with the glass in front of you You think you see clearly Mm -hmm. but no you got something in front of you and it's foggy Mm. and you don't know what you're seeing until you get out of that cage and you didn't realize there was always a fog in front of you there was always a turtle there was always that turtle take that how it is you know maybe you relate maybe you don't but at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, what am I philanthropizing? Am I taking away from the world? Or am I giving life to the world? And that's all what it's all about, baby. That is what it's all about. Giving life. Giving being salt. Giving flavor. Philanthropism or philanthrop <laughs> taking. <laughs> We might have to cut that out. (sighs) And that is where we end it. That was (laughs) phenomenally hilarious. Uh, Even with my head cold and all the sickness, I laughed on that one. And that right there is the definition of philanthropism. That's right. We'll see you next time. Y'all have a peaceful night. Mm -hmm.